All right, what I'd like to do now is uh, first kind of leadership dilemma uh, lecture here and workshop for you to start to develop your philosophy. And actually, I'd like you to talk on this on the discussion board a little bit. So individuality versus team, uh, we're gonna look at um, a situation here that's gone actually, started in 2016, the one we're talking about, but it actually started in 1968. So the case study here is uh, in 2016, Kalen Kaepernick, Kaepernick uh, was a quarterback for the 49ers and he goes ahead and sits or kneels for the national anthem. Um, so what we're gonna examine is individuality within a team sport, kind of a unique situation. What I want you to do is pause the lecture now and watch this minute and a half uh, interview and it's Kaepernick explaining in his own words what he's doing and why he's doing it. After that then there's a great article you can look at where he talks about uh, A.J. Perez about if it, the protest is actually going to end up mattering in the end. So a couple reactions. Uh, Vikings lineman Alex Boone who had been a teammate um, says, I had a brother that served and he lost friends, and I know how much it means to him, so he says it's shameful. It's a mark on the military. Uh, Jamie Schultz, who's an associate professor right here at Penn State in the kinesiology department, kind of a famous sport historian, makes a little different twist saying, uh, this has nothing to do with the military, it has to do with race relations and what people of color endure. Uh, he didn't denounce our troops. The reaction is why no other player, though, has come out and said they plan to do something similar. If we look at history, as I said, this was done in 2016, but it actually started in 1968. Muhammad Ali was uh, arguably one of the greatest heavyweight boxing champions of all time here in the U.S. Um, and at that time, the uh, Vietnam War was going on. Uh, on, this, uh, on April 28, 1967, uh, Ali refused to be inducted into the U.S. Army. It resulted in him being convicted of draft evasion, sentenced five years in prison, fined $10,000, and he was banned from boxing for three years, arguably in the prime of his career. Interesting thing as we look at history, uh, the Supreme Court overturned his conviction of evading the draft in 1971, but he lost all those prime years as a heavyweight. Interesting here, uh, you can see, even as a visual, this isn't the first time, 1968 to 2016. Another history situation, uh, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, along with uh, Peter Norman from Australia here, two American Olympic uh, athletes, in 1968 at Mexico City, did the famous uh, um, black glove fist in the air when they, in a protest to the anthem. Um, Again, both were sent home stripped of their medals, but then today uh, they are considered civil rights heroes, similar to Ali, and they support Colin Kaepernick's protest. Interesting piece is uh, uh, Peter Norman, the Australian, was actually, same thing, stripped, went back to Australia, but he died in 2006 and in 2012 Australia apologized and considered his actions in 68 a moment of heroism. A uh, great article here if you want to pause and look at that. More visual pieces. Uh, now at the Institute, uh, Smithsonian Institute, uh, it's the new National Museum of American, African American History and Culture. Uh, there's statues of Tommy Smith and John Carlos. So the article, as it says here, they didn't take a knee, the Black Power protest salute that shook the world in 1968. Some other leaders, as we examine and research leaders ourselves, responses, President Obama uh, said he's following his constitutional right to make a statement. I think there's a long history of sports figures doing that, and we can see in history they have. A neat uh, twist here note is Kaepernick's jersey number is one up out of the roof after the protest. Another response, President Trump um, said just the opposite, maybe he should find a, new, a country that works better for him. Um, interesting piece here, Trump proposed to actually pardon Muhammad Ali, uh, but as Ali's attorney uh, responded to it, we appreciate it, but the U.S. Supreme Court already overturned that, so we, there's uh, no conviction to be pardoned from. Another one, uh, the NAACP, there was actually a rally at the NFL headquarters to support Kaepernick. Um, 
And the interesting twist is Kaepernick uh, went unsigned for all these years and actually just settled uh, out of court with the NFL. Um, um, but he continued before that even to continue his million dollar pledge. Again, some other research articles. Again, the example of how you want to do your research, you want to get a lot of different resources so it's not biased one way or another. Last, NFL owners response, they tried to uh, uh, reprimand and discipline athletes that were protesting, that didn't work. So then they actually came out with, uh, um, tried to work with the players union, the players union uh, signed a grievance against that too. And actually last year they came out with no position. So we have still have players protesting, um, but uh, basically it is doing nothing at this time. So leadership application of this is, was it social awareness or is it a political statement? Is it a selfish act that takes away from the team? And then what side of history do you want to be on? The reason I'm asking this is now you want to take this situation, these ethical dilemmas, and figure out how you would deal with them or react as a head coach. So I'd like you to write this down, pause this, and actually write down, and these are things that you can use and talk about, talking points in your and the discussion board question, but also you can use in your first assignment, is how would you react or what would you say to the individual player? If a what would you say to Kaepernick if, this, if they did a protest? What would you say to the team? And the interesting thing here, if you're not familiar, but uh, um, Antonio Brown was a receiver on the Steelers, actually recorded with his phone uh, Tomlin giving a talk in the locker room and then put it on Facebook. So there's no real sacred spaces anymore. Uh, so your response, assume it's going to get to the public. And then last, you're going to walk out of the, the building, the complex, and you're going to have to talk to the media and then your response. So write down what you would say, what you would do. And these end up being good uh, illustrations you can use in your portfolio. Last thing here to look at with Kaepernick, he did do uh, a new Nike ad uh, and uh, just do a 30 year anniversary where it talks about the leave in something even if it means sacrificing everything, meaning his career. If you haven't seen it or you have, it's good to look back again because there was some very uh, rain, wide range of reactions from the burning of Nike shoes to um, great support then also. Pretty interesting, another great article there on that. So pause and look at that if you could. Last thing then for the portfolio application, and these are things you're gonna to have to address. What is leadership? How do you do it? What are some different leadership styles? We saw that right there with uh, Ali to Tommy Smith, John Carlos, to Kaepernick, to President Obama, President Trump, uh, NAACP, to the NFL owners, to the NFL uh, Players Union, all these different reactions. How do you accomplish uh, these major objectives you want to uh, do as a sports program and as a leader in your program? And then what is sport ethics to you? And how, more importantly, are you going to implement some of these values into your team? Uh, I would argue, and the point I'm trying to make here is make sure you do your research and your history. When you're starting to answer in this TRA on your assignments, Work in reverse order. Do the research. I just gave you a ton of it. And then the website has others for you. And the textbook and all these things are right there. Try to get different opinions, different viewpoints by doing your research and understanding your history. Okay. Lastly, you're a head coach now. You have to take a position. Um, it impacts, remember this though, the decisions and the words you choose and how you do that impacts everyone in that organization. It impacts everyone. So you have to take a position and that's what you'll do on the portfolio. Last thing here, some examples with the final project. Uh, my website, it's, look at that, it's an example of a, what we would call an e-portfolio or an electronic uh, coaching portfolio. Again, kind of a working resume versus an essay. There's the site. Get on there, there's some uh, resources you can use, Coach One-on-One, -on -one. there's other website links. Again, you're welcome to use anything and all of it, um, um, anything that'll help you with the portfolio, hopefully giving you more references, resources to, to have a great 
background research effort when you start to write your portfolio. Good luck.